me and Nicki Minaj. I, st- I got mad love from Nicki Minaj, even though she ain't fucking with me right now. She unfollowed me on Twitter, and you know she's made calls the 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 people in radio, people that I that I work for, and say she's never coming on the Breakfast Club again. You know, um, the, Wait, the she reason did I. That? Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm the so reason- I'm so upset. I'm yeah, so but- upset at this right now. It's, I'm it's, it's, so do not call yourself a boss and all this other shit if you're gonna go give a fucking Yelp review on a radio DJ. Get the fuck out of here with this but, shit. But, dude. but but this is what I'm saying. Like, okay, I know she got upset when I said I thought Anaconda was corny. My exact It's corny! But listen, my exact my exact synopsis on Anaconda when it first came out was I'm not feeling this record. It's not for me, it's for girls, it's for kids. It's for people that like to shake their ass. I said, when the video comes out, I'll probably appreciate this song more. But I said, this song is going to work. I just think it's corny. That's what I said. Then uh, when the BET Awards came around, I said, I think Iggy Azalea should have won Best Female Hip Hop Artist at the BET Awards because she has had a better year than Nicki Minaj thus far. I still feel that way. Now, I also said during that time period, Nicki Minaj is the king of New York. Because when I saw her perform at Summer Jam, I'm like, yo, she really owned that motherfucking stage. Mm-hmm. Like, she had the record. She had the looking ass and the yes bitch and the freestyles over Chirac. She was really dominating it. So if, if, if being the king of New York still means something, she was the king of New York. So therefore, I'm an objective fan. We talked about stands before. Stands cannot see anything wrong with their favorite artists. They love everything they do. If the artist farts, they're like, oh my God, that was the best sounding fart I ever heard in my life. She farted on beat, whatever. I'm an objective fan. I can give an objective opinion about things. Now, whenever we used to have Nicki Minaj on the show back in the day, all little Kim fans would be so mad. Like, oh, y'all so fucking biased. And, you know, y'all always going against Kim, blah, 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 this and that. And when Kim came to the radio show the first time, I was on her about that. I was on her about always dissing Nicki and you come off as bitter and, you know, um... You know, you're better than that. Why can't y'all just get along? And Kim was trying to explain herself on some, it ain't just me. She does this and she does that. So when Kim came to the show this time, what I've learned to do as a personality is to be biased and to be objective and do things for the listener's benefit. So being that I know little Kim got fans, yo, let's have a real good interview with little Kim. Since we're in a better space with Kim now, because I've seen Kim since the last time she came to the Breakfast Club, and I've seen Kim since the Can I Get a Drop shit, and I've acknowledged Kim in the street and said what's up to her, I told her she was beautiful, whatever. So we ended up having a great hour-long conversation with little Kim. And guess what happened? All those Nicki Minaj fans who used to ride with the Breakfast Club and, you know, love us for going in on Kim, now they hate us because we were biased with little Kim. It's just stand shit, bro. It's stand shit. And, They're and mad to as this, a motherfucker. To this, I will speak not only to the fans, to to Nikki's fans and stands all over, all over that are upset about this, but also to Nikki. I'm going to quote the god Bill Clinton and something he said that was brilliant. He goes, "We are less racist, sexist, and homophobic than we've ever been, but we do uh, have one continuing problem." We don't want to be around anyone who disagrees with us more than oh ever God. before. Oh. This motherfucker is a genius, and it is so true. Why are we so afraid? We used to be afraid of people with different races. We used to be afraid of people with different religions. Now we're cooler with that. We're just afraid when someone doesn't agree with us. If that isn't yes, the man. pussiest shit. Yes, man. It's, uh, it's all oh. good. Let me tell you something. That's, this is why... It shows I, a lack, not to cut you off, it shows a lack of intellect for me, to be honest with you. If you can't be around someone who disagrees with you, if you are, if you are not capable to take in a new opinion on the world, it just shows a lack of intellect. It is your ju- I I am excited when I watch something like Fox News for example who you know generally speaking I don't agree with their point of view but I get excited at their point of view cuz it's different than something that I've thought of it's a different POV Absolutely. give me that shit if you're afraid of a different point point of view you lack intellect man you you just you lack but, problem solving and not only that you're not supposed to be the smartest person in your circle if you're the smartest person Amen. in your circle your team is weak as fuck Amen okay 
I don't give a fuck who you think is the smartest person in the world. I guarantee you they're not the smartest person in their team. I guarantee you that they have people that they defer to when they need an opinion on something or when they are looking for a fresh idea or when they're searching for a title for the album, whatever the fuck it may be. And and my thing with the stands also is you can't get mad at the conduit. The Breakfast Club is the conduit, conduit. We are there to ask the questions. I don't know that what that word means. That sounds like a bird. A conduit is, is just... Uh, um, a vessel, basically. Okay, cool. We're a vessel. We're there to ask the questions that the people want to know. If Little Kim chooses to go in on Nicki Minaj, if she chooses to go in on K. Michelle, if she's got her manager Fendi there, who used to manage Nicki, and he decides to air out Nicki Minaj too, that's on them. And vice versa. If Nicki comes to the show and she decides to air out Little Kim, I'll put out a diss record about Little Kim, and we ask her about it and she talks about it, that's on her. You can't get mad at the Breakfast Club. They're mad at me because they feel like, you know, I used to jokingly be like, I'm Cedar Barb, whatever, whatever. So they want me to go in on Kim and defend Nikki. And, you know, when Kim says certain things, but I can only speak from a fan perspective. When little Kim comes and she says, hey, I dissed Nikki because she said Queen B in the Flawless Remix. Well, I'm like, no, nah, I don't think she was talking about you, Kim. I think she was mentioning Beyonce as the Queen B. That's as far as I go from that. That's all I feel yeah. about that. These Yo. these people, these people that think like that, like you're saying, if you ever wonder how slavery could happen, how the Holocaust could happen, how any of these genocides could happen, it's because of people like that. Because Absolutely. of people because of simple minded people that get one idea in their head and then aren't able to critically think and go, Maybe this isn't the right thing. Maybe I should take in new information. Those people, you're the reason why this horrible shit happens because someone tells you one thing and you go, you know what? I'm just going to believe that and not think for myself at all. Listen, like if, these- if there's one thing about this show that we do that is dope is we constantly contradict what we say. We constantly have a new fucking opinion about something. We constantly have a new point of view. And that's good. I don't care if you agree with it or you don't agree with it. But the fact that we're actually putting a new opinion out there and we get a lot of tweets like, yo, I don't know if I agree, but they make some interesting points. That to me says that you have a fucking brain. That's what life is about. Yeah. And this is a constant this is a constant thing. This isn't okay, me and Schultz get together once a day, once a week for a couple hours and do this. This is us every day. Every day. Whether we're texting each other, calling each other.